Hi, so today I will be talking about gravitational potential energy. It's the energy an object has due to its position in a gravitational field, or in other words called GPE. It's a form of mechanical energy caused by the height of the object above the surface of the Earth. Learning GPE can make it really easy to calculate the kinetic energy and the final speed of a falling object. To learn GPE, there's two factors, the object's position relative to a gravitational field and the mass of the object. The center of mass of the body creating the gravitational field is the lowest energy point in the field, and the farther from this point on the object is, the more stored energy it has due to its position. The amount of stored energy also increases if the object is more massive. You can understand it better if you think of a book resting on a table. The book has the potential to fall to the floor because of its elevated position related to the ground. But one that starts out on the floor can't fall because it's already on the surface. The book on the table has GPE, but the one on the ground doesn't. The intuition will also tell you that a book that's twice as thick will make twice as a big a thud when it's hit the ground. This is because the mass of the object is directly proportional to the amount of gravitational potential energy on the object has. So here is a gravitational potential energy formula, GPE equal mgh. The m is for mass, the g is for gravity, the h is for height, and the GPE value is joules. And remember that gravity is equal to 9.81 meter per second squared. So here are some of the questions of GPE and how to calculate them. Imagine a 10 kg mass suspended at a height of 5 meters above the ground by a pulley system. How much gravitational potential energy does it have? So using the equations GPE equal mgh and substituting the known values gives 10 kg multiply 9.81 meter per second squared and multiply 5 m. So it's equal to 490.5 joules. And that's the answer. So here's the next question, putting the G into the GPE. If you were on a Mount Everest which rises up to 8,848 meters above the Earth's surface, being so far away from the center of the mass of the planet would reduce the value of G slightly so you would have G equal 9.79 meter per second squared at the peak. If you had successfully climbed the mountain and lifted a 2 kg mass 2m from the peak of the mountain into the air, what would be the change in GPE? So using the formula, 2 kg multiply 9.79 meter per second square and multiply 2 equal 39.19 joules. Finding the kinetic energy using GPE. The conservation of energy can be used in many calculations in physics alongside with GPE. In short, under influence of a conservative force, total energy including the kinetic energy, the gravitational potential energy, and all the other forms of energy is conserved. The conservative force is one where the amount of work done against the forces to move an object between two points doesn't depend on the path taken. So gravity is a conservative because lifting an object from a reference point to a height h changes the gravitational potential energy by mgh. But it doesn't make a difference whether you move it in an s-shaped path or a straight line. It all just changes by mgh. So let's try an example. Imagine a situation where you are dropping a 500g or a 0.5kg ball from a height of 15 meters. Ignoring the effect of air resistance and assuming it doesn't rotate during its fall, how much kinetic energy would the ball have at the instant where it contacts within the ground? So the key to this problem is the fact that total energy is conserved. So all of the kinetic energy comes from the GPE and so the kinetic energy EK at its maximum value must equal the GPE at its maximum value or GPE equal EK. So EK equal GPE or GPE equal MGH. So 0 0.5 multiply 9.81 multiply 15 equals 73.58 joules. Thank you for watching.